Logo animations are everywhere. From streaming, to YouTubers, to film companies, tech, news, sports, and even gaming, like PlayStation. Who remembers this iconic logo animation? A big shout out to Filmline who did this effect in After Effects, and that video got 2.7 million views. If you don't have a super cool logo animation yet for your business, your YouTube channel, or just your brand, let me show you how to make one. The first step to creating a professional and sick logo animation is getting your colors right and making sure that you're playing into color science. On this site, coolers.co, we get access to trending color palettes, which is a great place to start for the color of our background and our logo animation. Personally, I really like how this one looks, but again, there are hundreds that you can choose from. Once you've found one that you like, go ahead and click the dots and say open palette. It's time to choose the background color for our logo animation. Personally, I love the way this red looks. I'm gonna go ahead and select those three dots and say quick view, right click again and say export as image. I'm gonna title this red. Change my color space to RGB and let's say export. We now have a PNG background color. A cool logo animation is just one way to creating professional, memorable videos. And if you're looking for other ways to do that, then CapCut Lab is something you may be interested in. I've created a course that summarizes my years of editing experience, both for YouTube and professional client work and fast tracks your way to becoming a CapCut master. If you wanna be able to charge more for your edits with clients, create better videos that reach more people or just create cool videos, then check out CapCut Lab. It's the first link in the description. I'll see you there. The next thing I quickly do is screen grab all my colors so that I can bring it into CapCut. Bring in your red background and let's change our ratio to 16 by nine so we get a full project. Now I'm just gonna expand that background so that we don't see any of those details anymore. Now we have our clean red background. I'll be animating the Netflix logo the same way you saw in the intro. Once you have your background, your logo, and the color palettes you're gonna use, there are only a few key steps to animating this in CapCut. So follow along and let's dive in. The first thing we wanna do is change the color of Netflix. You can see red on red just doesn't look good. So I wanna make sure Netflix is white. Go ahead to your adjustment tab and I'm gonna go down to my lightness section and drag all of these to 50. Swipe up to color and I'm gonna drag my saturation tab to minus 50. This gives us a clean white Netflix logo. Now let's just do a bit of resizing. I think that's a perfect size and I'm gonna leave it there for now. Selected on my logo layer, I'm gonna select add mask and let's select brush. I'm gonna drop my brush size to about 20 just so my brush fits into our letters. And here we go. Selected on the white part of X, I'm gonna create a straight line nearly to the bottom. That's gonna just isolate our X. Go ahead to your mask settings and hit reverse. That's then gonna show us our other colors. We can then go ahead and select quick brush again. Let's go ahead and apply the same thinking to the other letters just creating straight lines on those letters just like that. I'm then gonna to go to expansion and start toggling this down a little bit. This is gonna give us the outline for our letters. I think between minus seven to minus eight looks fantastic. By this point, you should have an outline version of your logo. Now what we're gonna do is right click on our logo layer and say create compound clip. Now let's animate the first slide on effect. I'm gonna to go to video, mask, and say add mask, and add a split mask. You can then angle your mask whichever way you want that to animate. I think a kind of diagonal 45 degree is gonna look great. Drag your mask so that you can no longer see your logo, and let's go down to mask settings and say add keyframe. I'm then gonna drag that keyframe to the beginning of my timeline just like that, and at about the two second mark, I'm gonna add another keyframe. We can then go ahead and drag our line to reveal our entire logo. Now when I play between those keyframes, you'll see that our logo is revealed diagonally. You can always adjust the second keyframe to make it a bit faster by dragging it closer to the first one. Now our animation happens a lot faster. I think that looks a bit better. From here, let's go ahead and right click on our clip and say show variable speed animation. I'm then gonna go to my X highlight over my two keyframes and click the little graph icon and then say quad ease. This is just gonna create some easing between our keyframes. Personally, I find that staying selected on my second keyframe and dragging this line slightly closer to the first one creates a really nice fast in animation and then it slows down as we get to the end. But because we animated diagonally, we both impacted the X and Y, so I'm gonna open up the Y keyframe animator, highlight that and do exactly the same thing that we did for X. 
Let's go ahead and select quad ease. And on our second keyframe, let's drag that line slightly closer to the first one. You can see just by using our keyframes a little bit, our animation now looks very slick. Let's go ahead and right click and say hide variable speed animation. Now hold down option on Mac. And if you're on a Windows computer, hold down alt and let's drag two more layers above our clip. We now have three layers of our logo animation. What I'm gonna do is select on my top layer and drag that slightly over. I'm then gonna drag my second layer right in between and this creates kind of a step staircase. I'll show you how this applies just now. Remember our color palette from before? I'm gonna go ahead and drag it into our project. We now have quick access to see the different colors that we can use. This is when you get to have a bit of fun with trial and error but let me show you a cool way to change the colors of your animation. We can delete the palette from our timeline and let's go into our first layer on our timeline. We can delete it because it's in our media bin. So let's go ahead and drag that right over. I'm going to shrink the size and drag it under so I can change Netflix to the exact color that I want it to be. For this first one, I think I want to change it to this dark blue. So select on your Netflix layer and let's go ahead to adjust. Because we're changing it to blue, I'm going to drag our temperature over to the blue side. I'm then gonna drag our saturation back. I'm then gonna go to my color wheels tab and let's go ahead and drag this over to blue. It takes a bit of time, but let me show you the values that I used. We changed our temperature to blue. I then changed my lightness settings like you're seeing right now. And this just reduced some of the brightness because we're dealing with a darker color there. I then went to my color wheels. I dragged all of my little circles over to the blue side and then reduced the exposure further on my exposure side of my color wheels. So just by using my basic tab and my color wheels, I got a color that matches somewhat to the color that we're seeing here. I'm then gonna delete my color palette. Let's go back to our main timeline and go into our second layer and drag our color palette back onto our timeline and do the same thing that we did for this first one. Now, instead of blue, I wanna use this dark red. So I'm gonna select on my layer. Let's go to basic and change our temperature to the orange side. I'm then gonna add my saturation back and let's do the same thing. We know we're dealing with a darker color, so we're gonna to need to start dropping certain values. Using my black slider to minus five and dragging all these other values, I'm able to get a deep red. Now let me show you what happens when I play this. We now get this split effect where all our layers are animating at different times so we can see the colors independently. And then as it animates, we finish with our white top layer. As I'm seeing our color palette and comparing it with the blue that we've chosen here, I think our first layer of blue is still slightly too bright. So I'm gonna go back to my adjustment tab and lower my black slider a little bit because yeah, it just wasn't looking similar to the blue we have in the palette. Those are some of the key fundamental steps and it's now time to fill in the Netflix logo so that we don't just leave it as an outline. I'm gonna go into my first layer and copy my Netflix layer by clicking Command C and let's go ahead and drag it onto our timeline. We're then gonna to go to video, mask, and delete the cut on mask that we did so that now we have a fully filled out Netflix logo. I'm gonna time our top layer to appear just before we finish that diagonal animation so I can drag it directly to my playhead. You can see now as our animation finishes, our color comes in. Once you're happy with the positioning, let's go ahead and create a compound clip on that Netflix layer. We're then gonna add a mask and add the film strip mask and let's turn that minus 90 degrees so we get it vertical. I'm then gonna drag those film strip lines over so we get the full logo. Then let's go ahead and drag that to the side, go to the first frame of that layer and create a mask setting keyframe. Drag a couple frames ahead, just like that. And let's go ahead and drag that over to the side. You'll see now when that plays, we can then go into our top layer because we know this is the white layer, click Command C and let's go ahead and paste that. Doing the same thing that we just did, let's go ahead and delete that brush layer so we have that white fill come in. I want my white fill to come in as we start revealing that first letter. I can toggle using my arrow keys and I can see that this is the first frame that that white fill would need to come in. Let's go ahead and drag that white fill underneath our top layer and you'll see now as it slides across, it reveals our Netflix logo. From here, you have the basis of your animation. You can add any text you want as well, like your website. Go to text and let's add a default text layer. I want my text to show up just as we're about to finish this animation here. Let's go ahead and add it just like that. Type in your website link and drag it just underneath. Personally, I think this looks way too big, so I'm gonna decrease its size right there. Now in the animation tab on my in animation, I'm gonna go ahead and select fade in and we can change the duration for however long you want that fade in to last. Now go to the beginning of your text layer 
let's swipe down to the transform tab and create a transform keyframe. Now tab using your arrow keys a couple frames ahead and let's create another keyframe. Selecting on the last keyframe option, I'm gonna go ahead and drag that down a bit. You'll see now between our two keyframes, Netflix slides up. This animation isn't gonna look good if we just leave it linear. So let's go ahead and right click and show variable speed animation. Now, because we're only dealing with the Y axis as it's only moving up, I'm gonna select Y, highlight my two keyframes, select quad ease, and just like we did for those other ones, let's go ahead and drag that line over from our second keyframe slightly over to the first one. Now you'll see we have a really smooth Netflix animation. I think personally it's happening a little bit too fast. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag that second keyframe over a bit. Much smoother. Now I'll highlight all the layers that we just made, right click and say, create compound clip. This is gonna reduce those all to one specific layer and it's where we're gonna do our scaling. You can choose wherever you want the scaling change to happen, but I'm gonna select it right before we see our website link. Go over to video and create a scale keyframe, toggle slightly ahead, until the end of that website link animation and create another scale keyframe. And we can go ahead and decrease the size a bit. Now I'm gonna to go to the first frame to where I see our website and I'm gonna add a position keyframe. Then again, using my arrow keys, I'm gonna to go to the last frame where netflix.com stops animating and create another position keyframe. Now using my Y option on position, I'm gonna select that and drag it up so that our logo animates up. You'll see now that we both have a reduction in size and a swipe up. Let's finesse this animation a bit so our scale change finishes and then we see our position change. I'm gonna right click and say show variable speed animation, which gives us the option to move these keyframes independently. I'm gonna drag my first scale keyframe slightly over and bring the point that it ends on our second keyframe slightly over as well. Let's go ahead and see how that looks. I think that looks a lot better. I can just see I want my Y animation to also finish slightly faster. So I'm gonna drag that second keyframe over slightly. Let's go ahead and open up scale, highlight those and change this to cubic ease. And once again, drag our second one over slightly. Just changing this to quad ease and dragging that over really creates a premium feel. I'm gonna do the same for Y, highlight those and change this to quad ease. And I think that looks perfect just the way it is. Let's go ahead and drop our speed animation. There are two more easy things that you can do to amplify this to make it look even cooler. Let's go ahead and select on our compound clip, select option to create a duplicate layer. Selected on my compound clip, I'm gonna go over to adjust, go to my color wheels and drag my offset down. Now I'm gonna highlight on our second blur layer and drag that on. Personally, I think the blur is a little bit too much and we're seeing the shadow a bit too much as well. So I can select on that first layer, go to video, go to blend, and let's go ahead and drag that opacity down to about 32%. What it's doing here is creating a really sleek shadow. The last thing we're gonna do is go to our top layer, go to video and apply some motion blur. And that's exactly how you create a beautiful looking, really trendy logo animation in CapCut.